Let's look at Tuesday in the NBA. There are seven games on. Which players do we stream in to win a matchup? Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd, and tomorrow I'm going to have to take a day off. I've got a job interview to be the new Royal Photoshopper. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com, and you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, and the Nissan Armada, and go and find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at Nissan USA. Com. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. Double bangers, unite. Go and hit that thumb on the video. Go listen to the audio. Subscribe, bell, comment. You know how it works. Let's talk. Tuesday's games, there are seven of them on in the NBA and we need to be paying attention. Things are changing rapidly, as always, in the league. Um, let's talk the first game. It is the Philadelphia 76ers, the New York Knicks, the rematch. Will a team score over 80? I think they will because we're getting some players back. Well, there's one player who's at least a scorer who is coming back, and that is Tyrese Maxey. He's returning for the Sixers. The Sixers play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday this week, and they go into a four-game week in Week 21. The Knicks have Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday this week as well, and then go to three games the following week. Maxey will return. Tangles is back for the Sixers. Embiid is out. Melton's out. Covington's out. Randall's out for the Knicks. Robinson is out. OJ Anobi is questionable. But it does appear that that is more on the probable side of questionable. Shams is rep- reporting that he looks like he's going to be back for this game on Tuesday. So it looks like the Jedi is going to be back and Max is going to be back. What are we watching for the six? Is Buddy Heald's not on the injury report, even though he left the last game with injury. Came back and sat on the bench at the end. But he was demoted. He was benched. What do they do? Is it Lowry? Is it Ubre? Is it Heald? Is it Payne? Is it Batum? Like, who starts? Heald, the schedule's okay here. Tuesday through the next week. That's seven games. It's not bad. Seven games in 13 days. Pretty strong schedule. But he's been very borderline. I would hold for now. For the Knicks, Josh the Hitman Hard is playing a million minutes. Let's see what the uh, expected return of OG Ananobi does. Like, who gets cut? Like, Boyan's going to lose a lot, obviously. But does Precious lose some? Does Hart lose some? Does Hart go from 42 minutes to 34 minutes? That might be what all it needs is... Yeah, him moving to that level, if he plays 34 minutes, Josh Hart, that might mean he's not a must-roster guy. Same as Precious playing 25. We'll see where these minutes go. Kyle Lowry is currently getting boosted at the moment with the Sixers with DeAnthony Melton out. He probably is a 12-team league guy, but we'll see what happens with Melton, uh, with Maxi back, sorry. And then Achua is getting that boost because Randall is out. But again, we really need to see what happens with Achua uh, and the Hartenstein minutes limits and the return of Ananobi and how all that stuff works in. There are a lot of question marks still on that Knicks team. The next game, we're looking at a, an annoying game. It is the Wizards and the Memphis Grizzlies. The Wizards have got four more games this week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that's great. The problem is we don't know about some injuries. The Wizards only play three games the following week in week 21. The Grizzlies go Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday this week. So that's a nice Tuesday, Wednesday, back-to-back. Then you've got days off to wait till Saturday. Then only three games next week. And we know they're going to be a disaster. Marvin Bagley's out for the Wizards, but we don't know about Rashawn Holmes. Now, I want him back because Rashawn Holmes, four games in six nights, is really going to be good for us. But I don't know. I wish we knew. Like, if you're in a spot to take a gamble, that's a gamble that might pay off in a big way. But if you get two games out of Holmes, it's absolutely not worth it. Um, Bilal Kulabali sprained his ankle at the end of the last game. He did come in for the final, like, 10 seconds or whatever to do some uh, defensive work. We'll see whether he pops up on the injury report. And then it's the Grizzlies. Last game, they uh, they injured. Vince Williams, Jordan Goodwin, John Conchar, and Yuta Watanabe. We're not going to get anyone else back. We're not going to get Bain back or Smart back or Clark back or any of those. It's about, does Williams play? Does Goodwin play? Does Conchar play? Does Watanabe play? Does Jaron Jackson play? Does Luke Kennard play? Who are the other ones that we could look at? There's a million different guys. So everyone's in danger of sitting. And we had big minutes from Gigi Jackson and Dijon Giroux and Jake LaRavia started, but 
do they even like how much do they we don't know we don't know wait until you hear injury reports and then even if you can wait longer to wait for starting lineups that's the best way for the Wizards we are watching Corey Kispert he was great last game nice assist good scoring volume and if Holmes is out we are definitely rolling with Kispert and then LaRavia I think is one of three Grizzlies that's reliable and one of those is Jaron Jackson and one of them is Vince Williams who I don't know is going to play so LaRavia we're watching Bilal is getting boosted as a starter cool I believe Defensive stats have been nice. I still like to see a little bit more offensive usage, but he's got a nice little boost. And then for the Grizzlies, honestly, it, Dijon Giroux might be boosted. If Goodwin's out again, if Conchar's out, he's going to play 28 minutes and honestly, maybe worth streaming, especially with a Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back. Of course, he might sit one of those games or Canard plays both of them, which would feel like a minor miracle. But all that stuff can happen, making that team again impossible to plan for. We go to the next game. It is the Indiana Pacers. They're going to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Pacers play Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Saturday with four games the week after. The Thunder have Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday this week with three games the week after. At the moment, injury-wise, Doug McDermott's dealing with a calf issue. I don't think he's going to play, so I'm going to mark him doubtful. Jalen Smith was a weird late scratch with an illness last game, so I'll put him questionable. And then we don't have the update yet on the Bronco Jalen Williams. They're leaving it pretty late. I would be very, very surprised if Williams plays this game. I think there's a chance he sits the Tuesday and Thursday, Jalen Williams, but I don't think he's going to be out there for Tuesday at the very least. With Benedict Mathurin missing for Indiana, we're getting a lot of TJ McConnell. So if he's a 27-minute guy, he's a very clear must roster player. We want to watch that. I want to see Lou Dort as well. Does he do anything with Williams out that doesn't hurt us? I fear that he takes more shots and hits him at 36%, which hurts. But let's see what Dort does, or Giddy as well. In terms of guys getting boosted, we had 37 minutes from Aaron Neesmith last game. That did come also with Nempard playing only 25. So what's real? If Nempard plays 31 or 32, is it McConnell that loses? Is it Neesmith that loses? I would be okay with McConnell and Neesmith being 12-team options for now. And then in deeper leagues, Kaysan Wallace, I'm expecting to play more minutes with Jalen Williams likely out. I guess they could start Usman Jeng or Gordon Haywood, but they went with Wallace last game and he was the one who played well. He's a nice, deeper league guy, but watch for Gordon Haywood there as well as an option that they could uh, lean into a little bit more than they have been. The next one is the Houston Rockets and the San Antonio Spurs. Quite a few unknowns here. The Rockets play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then three games the week after. The Spurs uh, play Tuesday, Friday, Sunday with three games the week after, but of course, San Antonio is also playing on Monday. Uh, there is zero chance that El Prince Chagun is playing in this game. None. We haven't got an update yet, and I would love one, but we don't have one. He's not going to play this game. He's not going to play this week. He's not going to play this season is my guess. Victor Wembanyama and Devin Vassell are both playing on Monday. I think there has to be at least some level of doubt that they both play on Tuesday. So I'm labeling both Wemby and Vassell questionable. Chetty Osman is going to be out irrespective. For the Rockets, well, we just need to see what happens without Shangun. Amen Thompson's by far the best fantasy player between him, Jeff Green, Jock Landale, and Ken Whitmore. Do they go small and play Brooks, Green, Thompson, Van Vliet in the starting lineup? That would seem extremely unlikely to me. It doesn't mean Amen can't get some extra minutes, but it would seem unlikely that he would start. Do they start Whitmore with Jabari at center? Or is it just Jock, Jock Landale? Jock Landale? Is it Jock Landale? Does he move into the starting lineup? Does Jeff Green start? We don't know. I think Landale is getting a boost irrespectively. He's played 17 minutes last game. He's going to be in the rotation somewhere. 26 minutes of Landale is a 12-team option. 26 minutes of Whitmore is a 12-team option. 24 minutes of a men is a 12-team option. And we might get all three of those things happening. For the Spurs, Malika, Malaka, Malaka Branham. What do I call him? Malaka. Malachi Branham is on a hot streak with his shooting. The role is pretty secure, which I feel good about. And I like using him for some points and threes, but the wheels for that could honestly come off really at any point. Today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes you need that opportunity to get something off your chest, whether it's big or small. Certain things can really start to get to you. It might be your favorite team going on a losing streak. It might be your favorite team that's terrible deciding they're going to start winning games now, ruining their lottery odds. These things might seem small, but getting them off your chest to someone that's unbiased in your life, well, it can be a really like a big help. For me, I'd love to know what Memphis is doing every game, and I'd love to be able to vent that to somebody. Hey, can these guys tell us an accurate injury report? It frustrates me. It makes my job harder. But that's so small in the scheme of things. It doesn't matter. I still need to get it out. I still need to vent my frustrations. We've got bigger problems than these sort of things, obviously. But getting these things off your chest every once in a while is useful. 
Therapy can come in and be helpful. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. Okay, let's go on to the next game of the day. It is the Boston Celtics and the Utah Jazz. Be prepared to be shenaniganized. The Celtics are playing on Monday. They've also got Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, plus four games next week. They have a Sunday, Monday back-to-back, hitting between week 20 and week 21, and then a weekend back-to-back to end week 21. Three back-to-backs, 14 days. There are going to be a million rests coming for Boston. Utah goes Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. They've had a terribly weak schedule but then they move into four games in week 21. I'm going to tell you now that Al Horford is not playing on Tuesday. He's playing Monday. He is not playing on Tuesday. I don't expect that Sacro Iliac legend Jalen Brown is going to play on Tuesday. Everyone was listed. All the starters were listed questionable for Monday. The only guys ruled out are Porzingis and Drew Holiday. So I think there is a massive chance that Derek, Derek White is out Tuesday. I'd say Jalen is almost definitely out. Al Horford is definitely out. I'd say Derek White and Jason Tatum will be questionable to play on Tuesday. I would say Porzingis. I don't know how real this hamstring issue is. I'd say he's questionable for Tuesday. And I would say it's a fairly decent chance that Drew Holiday is back for Tuesday. But you might have no Brown, White, Tatum, Horford. So Cornette, Tillman, um, Pritchard, Hauser, Springer. There's a million guys who could step up. For the Jazz... I don't think that Lowry Markinen is going to play, but we don't have an update. Just going to go and double check on this. We do not have an update on that at this point. Um, and Taylor Hendricks is going to be out. So the Celtics are on a back-to-back, but it's going to be a messy thing for them tomorrow. Keontae George has been really putting in big numbers. They are putting the ball in his hands. He's somehow turning somewhat efficient. Big assists, good threes. Occasional steal. He is a must roster player. Guys that could get boosted, we see Peyton Pritchard there in Boston, who, depending on who's in or who's out, could get a boost, so could Springer. And then Bryce Sensibor, if Larry Markin is out, Sensibor is probably going to start, probably get to 30 minutes, might push a double-double, hit some threes, get some scoring. Really good value for Sensibor on that Thursday, but then the problem is waiting for a Friday, Saturday back-to-back, and we don't know if Markin is going to play or what the Jazz are going to start to do. I think it is going to start to get pretty messy on that team. The next one is the Minnesota Timberwolves and the LA Clippers. The Wolves only have the two games this week. We've talked about this, honestly, since September, or August, actually. They play Tuesday, which is great. So if you've got some uh, Wolves guys, maybe you hold them for Tuesday, and then you can move on. But then they don't play until Saturday. That's rough. They do have four games the week after, which is a positive. For the Clippers, they've got a great schedule. Four games and six nights. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, and then three the following week. Both Rudy Gobert, or not both, all three of Rudy Gobert, Kyle Anderson, and Monte Morris sat out the game on Sunday. I'm not including Kyle Anthony Towns on these anymore. He's done for the year. Gobert and Anderson sat out that game. I do think that they'll be available to play on Tuesday. More so Gobert than Anderson. Morris, I'm leaning more towards doubtful, but I'm not sure. But also, if they don't play, they get basically a week off to sit until that game on Saturday. So that's worth mentioning. Westbrook's going to be out for the Clippers, and Kawhi and Paul George sat out on Sunday. They'll be back in this one. Nikhil Alexander-Walker really stepped up over the weekend, played a lot of minutes, and if Anderson and, and Morris are out, he is going to be worth streaming for this day. But I don't know that yet. And Ivica Zubats looks back to being Ivica Zubats, so we just keep that eye on him. Guys getting boosted, obviously the Wizard of Noz, Nas Reed's getting boosted. He was great, at least in the first half of that last game. If Gobert is out, we really get the big boost. If Gobert and Anderson both play, well, it becomes iffier Reed. He, he's a, he is honestly a tough one for this week. You probably hold for Tuesday, but then with one game in five nights, is that worth a hold? I would lean no. But that is going to, if you're in an easy matchup, then that, you know, you hold. If it's a tough one, that might actually send you out. Norman Powell's getting the big usage boost as well with Westbrook out. I don't expect, there is a chance that Harden sits one of these games coming up. I would think more the Thursday, Friday back to back's the target there. But Powell's getting that boost irrespective. Milwaukee and Sacramento is the last game of the day. For the Bucks, they have three games this week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, and then three games next week. The Kings have Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday this week. So a back-to-back Tuesday, Wednesday, and then four games the week after. I labeled Chris Middleton as doubtful. He is officially questionable. Oh, we look like we have some movement here for Middleton. He's been just ruled out every game. So now questionable. So that, I would say that that means he probably plays. Keegan Murray is questionable, but he did practice. So it looks like he'll be all right. And Sasha Vazenkov is doing a little bit of work, but he still remains out. Brooke Lopez has been struggling for Milwaukee. 
in a points league, if you're in a situation where you need to cycle through, he might be one of your worst two players, and that means that he's droppable. Let's see what he does here. And Keegan Murray, we know the inconsistency. I do expect him to play, but we want to see something good happen. Leaky Beasley's been getting boosts with Middleton out. Does that continue if Chris plays? And then Leaky Monk for Sacramento has been the guy they've been leaning on much more so than old mate um, Kevin Herter because obviously Monk is the much better player and that is the direction that the team is going, rightfully so. Today's episode is also brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little bit further and you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class-exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. You've got Google Assistant, Google Maps, and the Google Play Store built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Armada. It will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. You just picture a rugged 4x4 that can sit up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, and the Nissan Armada and go and find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Okay, let's look at the schedule. Tuesday, Wednesday, back-to-backs. There are three teams, Pacers, Grizzlies, Kings. So the McConnell, Neesmith bump is there. The Grizzlies, I don't know. LaRavia feels somewhat safe, but I, I don't know. And then for the Kings, obviously Leaky Monk, but Herder and Barnes get a little bit of a boost. Trey Lyles in deeper formats just because of that back-to-back. If we look at the next four days, there's only one team in the next four days playing three games in four nights, and that is the Clippers. So there's your little normie power boost. Nice little value for Ivica Zubats as well. And Mia Coffee for very deep leagues. There's five teams that play one game in four nights. There's the two two two-game teams, the Lakers and the Wolves, and the Lakers have a dreadful schedule next week as well. There's Brooklyn, Cleveland, and the Warriors. Now, Cleveland's got everyone out at the moment. So if you're trying to stream in a Sam Merrill, Isaac Okoro, George Nyang, after Monday, with one game in four nights, you could consider switching one of those guys out to get a Norman Powell in. Brooklyn... It's like a Dorian Finney-Smith, maybe even a Schroeder. With only, they've only got one game in five nights. The Nets, bad schedule. Warriors, it's a Pajemski type that you could consider. Maybe even a Wiggins if you're looking to maximize games. And the Lakers and the Wolves, we've been on about ad nauseum. Over the next six nights, so Tuesday through to Sunday, the Clippers and the Wizards have four games. That is why we want Rashawn Holmes out there. If not, it's a really good value opportunity for Corey Kispert. And then these four teams, the Cavs, Warriors, Lakers, and Wolves, only have two more games the rest of the week. So your fringe Warriors and fringe Cavs guys, after Monday, they become um, potentially droppable players. Over the next eight nights, Tuesday through to Tuesday, um, the Wizards are the only team with five and eight. Again, Powell. Not Powell, Holmes. Not Dwight Powell, bloody hell. No, Rashawn Holmes. Did I say Powell before? I hope not. Rashawn Holmes. Corey Kispert. Even Bilal Kulabali getting that bit of a bump there. The three game in eight night teams, Cleveland, Golden State, Lakers, Wool, uh, Lakers, Bucks, sorry, Thunder, Suns, and Raptors. Now, getting two games over eight nights, it's a plus two still. I don't love it. It's not a gigantic advantage. I'd like to be getting plus two in shorter periods of time so I can then get another plus two in another period of time. But all that's going to depend on how many stream spots you use, how many waiver ads you use for the week as well, and how much you need to preserve those situations. To stream guys in for Tuesday for Yahoo Points, Got an array of different guys here. Keontae George, the priority. Santi Aldama's there. I've got Rashawn Holmes if he plays. Throw Corey Kispin into that mix if Holmes is out. TJ McConnell and Aaron Neesmith for Indiana. And then I do unbelievably go to Jake LaRavia. ESPN points, it's relatively similar. Um, obviously, with the, the, the Rockets guys, you can chuck them all in there. Whitmore and Men and even Landau. We just don't know how they're going to run that. Keontae George sits atop the ESPN points one with McConnell, Aldama, Rashawn Holmes, Aaron Neesmith, and Amen Thompson does pop into my top six on that list. But again, if you, I am very interested to see what Amen does. I'm just pretty skeptical they're going to play him as a starter because that would be very small. But we'll see. We just don't know the way that Udoka is going to run this. For category leagues, who are we streaming in for the scoring categories? For, for points, you know how we do this. A standard league sort of guy, a deeper league sort of guy. Keontae George and Cam Whitmore. For threes, Keontae George and Corey Kispert. 
Kispert's available in like 75% of leagues at the moment. For big man stats, looking at rebounds. Well, I am still going to look at Precious Achua, even though OG might return. And then Jock Landau will be the good one there for the Rockets. And then for blocks, Paul Reed and Luke Cornett. Although, Cornett may not play. Maybe it's Tillman. The Cornett ones at the moment I'm projecting to play, but I don't know. They might go with Tillman in some of these games. And I think the Celtics are going to be very, very, very messy over this time frame. Guard stats, looking for assists. Well, TJ McConnell has to be at the top of that list. Keontae George is there too. For steals, Amen Thompson's a very clear option there. And then TJ is a good steals guy also. And percentages, field goal, guess who it is? It's TJ McConnell again. He's an unbelievable source of assists and steals and has field goal percentage. Well, he has good field goal percentage. I've got Luke Cornett there again. I don't know. Free throw percentage, Keontae George and Malaka Branham into that zone as well. For the stream of the day, your 10-teamer, we're going with Keontae George. For 12, I am going with McConnell. 14, I'm going with Jake LaRavia. And 16, I am going with Kaysan Wallace because I am assuming that old mate Jalen Williams is out. And that is a very, very, very quick look ahead to Tuesday's action. So if you enjoyed the quick Tuesday action, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, ring the bell, leave your comments down below and subscribe. Yeah, subscribe and double bang. Audio, video, that is the way to do it. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.